Welcome back to the channel folks and to another painting tutorial. This is actually the second painting tutorial that I've completed recently for Yag Panthers and it was a very similar scheme to this with similar colours. But I thought I would show you how to get really sharp straight edges on a stripy camo like this. You may have seen some of these uh, examples in any research, any googling that you've been doing. And it's a very nice attractive kind of camo and a little bit different as well so I thought I'll show you how I would get those straight edges using an airbrush. You're looking at the finished product so to speak just now folks this is after the airbrushing, the weathering, the detailing, stowage and so on and what you can hopefully see from the, the video is how flat the finish is, how smooth the surface is and that is what you get from using an airbrush. You can paint the same camel with a brush as opposed to the airbrush but the difference will be this flat finish. To get precisely thin parallel lines with a brush instead of the airbrush it's going to take lots of coats of very very thin paint otherwise it's going to be quite lumpy. It's going to look like a ridge and that is the advantage of airbrushing you're not going to get that look you're going to make it look as though it's pretty much one coat of paint and in scale for what we're painting here I'm going to be using super thin masking tape to get this look plus some blue tack but it's quite a quick process folks once you know what you're doing and as you'll see, I actually have to stop and go back a bit because I've realised I've made a couple of blunders. But once you know what you're doing, you can get this camo done with an airbrush really quite quick. A lot quicker than irregular patterns if you wanted to do just blotches all over the vehicle. If you want to try this type of masking yourself, have a look online. Um, you'll be able to find, no doubt, a local supplier with this kind of tape or eBay, Amazon, something like that. Anyway folks, let's get started. Here we have the base coated tank I've used Tamiya Dark Yellow 2 as the base coat and it's the first colour I've put on. I'm going to be creating four camo bands across this. Some will be right on the body of it, some will be right in the corner of it, but either side you'll see four. And I've started with dark yellow too, as that is going to be the initial colour that I'm going to mask. To achieve the very straight lines that you associate with this um, historical camo variant, I'm going to be using masking tape. Now I've got some very very thin masking tape. Some of it is 2 mil wide, some of it is 1 mil wide. So I'm going to use that, that will allow me to get these really nice straight edges. There is a risk when using masking materials of lifting the paint off. So with the masking tape, I'm going to just run each length along the, the paper that I've got to cover my table. And that will just take some of the tackiness off it and just lower it down to a level that we can be confident won't lift the paint off. If you use certain kind of paints are more likely to lift off than others. For instance, Fellagio is going to lift off more easily than Tamiya. However, you know, you can approach that difficulty in various ways, including using undercoats and uh, in this case, so the Tamiya, whilst it scratches easy, won't lift, paint will not lift off. Now we have to size up the figure, size up the kit that we're working on so that we get a nice evenly spaced set of camo bands. You know these we want to go diagonally from one side to the other meaning that at the back on one side and then at the front on the other side the camo bands will look very small and in the centre they're going to look bigger because they're going to stretch fully over the entire width of the tank. As the tank itself is not one smooth flat 
objects you're going to have to work it into the the corners and around and over features so the back end of a hobby knife or something similar that is blunt but thin will help you just push it into all the little corners and around those little objects and just help you smooth down the sides for a nice tight edge all over Some obstacles, so to speak, are going to be harder to work with and it's not going to be easy to get the tape to go over in one length from one side of the vehicle to the other. So you can cut it, trim it to size so that you can then work around the little difficult areas with open ends of the tape, which are much more easy to apply than an entire length when you try to squeeze both sides of the one piece of tape around one object. Whilst you're attending to this challenge, don't forget, keep the size and the placement of your bands correct. Bear that in mind as you're working. Now, the bands themselves look better if they're not absolutely parallel. And even the, the, the yellow bands and the brown in the middle, you know, you can have lines that come together, perhaps towards the center and then come back out again, or perhaps they start wider on the top and then come a little bit narrower on the bottom. But you've got to bear this in mind as you go and keep stopping, looking at what you're doing and making sure that you're on the right track. As you're pushing the tape into the, the nooks and the crannies, you may find it lifts out or off of a feature you've already worked on so keep your eye on that folks the tape will stretch to a degree but it'll want to lift as you push and pull so be prepared to do a little bit of adjustment left and right as you work across the width of the tank so you're probably thinking this is a lot of work and why are we doing this well we're going to get a really really flat finish that's one advantage of airbrushes folks you're going to get such a smooth surface it's not going to look like painted lines it's going to look as though the lines are part of the surface and that's why we're doing this now you can still achieve this look by brush simply by painting the lines straight on it's a bit trickier because it's going to be harder to get those really sharp straight lines but it's an option for you folks and the colours I'm using here will work just as well on that approach as on the airbrush approach. I'm going to put one band of camo on the barrel uh, just roughly in the middle we'll try and line it up with the camo band that cuts across the front glasses. Um, if you hold the tank at its side and look at it that'll give you a sort of rough idea you know sort of draw, just draw the line up uh, with your eye to it and keep those uh, bands of tape nice and short and also nice and tight because you don't have a lot of space to work around uh, it's a very small uh, circumference on the barrel right folks we have four bands of camel cutting across the tank and one across the barrel so ready for the next stage we're going to be airbrushing on the Tamiya Red Brown, the coat of Tamiya Red Brown that is going to be left visible and the finished result between the two bands of tape that we've just placed on. Whilst we're going to be covering everything out with the bands, ultimately with uh, green, I still like to spray the whole thing with the red brown. You can just spray between the bands if you want but if you leave the yellow there, that's quite a bright colour and you find that the light green we're going to be using struggles a bit to cover it and you need to use more coats as a result whereas if you make the whole thing brown then you get a nice even finish on the final coat and therefore it requires just a little bit, a little bit less time and effort. Now we need to mask the Tamiya Red Brown and I'm going to use 
good old blue tack for that folks. Some nice thin strips just placed across the camo bands in between and on to the, the tape that we've placed. So just remember you're masking the right bit here as well folks. Uh, bear in mind where your bands are and don't mask the areas that you ultimately want to be green. Now when you're placing this on, keep it nice and tight down onto the tape. Don't let it go over the edges of the tape though, because then you're going to start getting uh, uneven areas. You want these nice straight lines that, have, that are going to be caused by the nice straight edges of the tape. And just work your way around the vehicle. Now we're ready for the green and I use Tamiya Nato Green as my my green on my three-tone camel for my Germans. So we're just going to spray it all over folks. Nothing fancy here, nothing difficult. Just keep it as much as possible heading straight down, you know, sort of perpendicular to the tape. So if any tape edges have lifted a little, you're not spraying sideways into them. But it's a very simple process. This is the easiest part of the whole airbrushing process. Now it's time for the reveal folks where we get to peel off all our masking and see what a wonderful camel we have created. So it's quite natural here we're going to be taking off the blue tack first and then moving on to the, the tape. So you can see the lovely straight edges we've got here, the nice edge between the brown and the yellow and the green and that's what we're looking for. But you know folks as I'm starting to peel off this tape I'm beginning to think to myself, something's not right. I've done something or failed to do something here. And this can quite often happen when you're working through a new or unfamiliar process. I couldn't quite put my finger on what it was just now. It was just something in the back of my mind. But the more I removed the masking, the clearer the issues became to me. The biggest problem was I used the wrong green folks. I only used the, the Tamiya Nato green for soft edge camo. A soft edge it comes out nice, semi opaque, nice and bright. As a hard edge camo it's too dark. I always use Vallejo Panzerese's Italian tank crew for the green on my camo and that gives a much brighter final look. I've also decided the yellow lines are too thick here. When I did this before, I did it with just three lines and the proportions looked good. But here with the four lines, the yellow looks too big, looks too bold. So I'm going to have to do some corrections. Fixing the green's easy, I just have to do some more masking. Fixing the lines means repeating this whole masking process um, by using the one mil tape and placing them over the yellow lines, tight against the brown or the green depending on where I want the thickness of the lines to be adjusted. So here they are, re-taped, so to speak, folks, ready to go for some more blue tack masking and then the final coat of green. I'm not going to show you that because you've already seen what that process is. We'll just move on to have a look at the, the finished result, but I think you'll find the thinner lines are going to look much better than the thicker lines and hopefully you can see here how there is some yellow showing you know either side of the tape depending on whether or not I want a thicker line or a thinner line and it's going to get a much better result. Well there you go folks compare that to what I did previously skip back if, if you need to and I think you can see that the thinner lines definitely work a lot better and the green gives a much better contrast with the the yellow and the brown to really help show off those camo stripes. Also, you can tell I've done the edge highlighting here. The, the Iraqi sand colour that I've used is going to work a lot better on this lighter sort of apple green than on the darker green. It'd work okay in the darker green, but here it really looks nice and soft, like a highlight as opposed to a sharp neon kind of brightness. Anyway, folks, hope you enjoyed that. Hope it was useful. If you've got any questions, stick them down in the comments below and I'll get back to you. There are some still pictures coming up at the end, folks, so you can get a look at the finished result in a bit more detail. But once again, thank you for watching. Everybody who watches, I really do appreciate it. And to all the subscribers out there, and if you'd like to subscribe, please do so to help me bring this kind of content to other people who enjoy this hobby. And if you hit the bell button, 
I'll definitely see you all on the next one.